You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Working Like Dogs is brought to you by 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. 1-800-PET-MEDS is your best source for pet medications, vitamins, supplements, and pet supplies. Get great savings, fast service, and free shipping. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash work, W-O-R-K, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more. Hello and welcome to Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're your hosts. My name is Marcy Davis and my co-host is my trusty service dog, Whistle. And Whistle and I are so excited to have as our guest today, Tanja Peterson Went. And Tanja lives in Ashland, Nebraska, and she was the winner of the 2010 National Assistance Dog Contest for Best Event. And Tanja is going to talk with us today about the event that she organized to raise the awareness of service dogs in her state and the work that she is doing regarding service dog legislation in Nebraska. So come right back after these quick messages from our sponsors as we begin our visit with Tanja Peterson Went. Come right back. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Working like dogs is brought to you by Petco.com. Petco is a leading specialty retailer of premium pet food supplies and services, offering more than 10,000 high-quality pet-related products. Enter the code WORK10, W-O-R-K, the number 10, and get 10% off any order. No minimum at Petco.com. Pet Life Radio presents Paranormal Pets, where you can always expect the unexpected. Each week we'll discuss all aspects of weird or spiritual animal encounters, ghosts, totems, psychic animals, animal souls, animal angels, and animals in religion, with a little cryptozoology thrown in. Step into the supernatural world of pets with your Paranormal Pets ghostly host, Dusty Rainbolt, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. Whistle and I would like to welcome our guest today, Tanja. Hello, Tanja, and congratulations. Hello. Thank you so much. Well, we're so excited that you're with us, and we're so excited about all that you did for this year for the 2010 National Assistance Dog Week. And we just have so many questions that we want to ask you. But first of all, I have to start out and ask you to tell our listeners about who you are and why you were interested in service dogs to begin with. Well, thank you, Marcy. Well, I am um, just a person who found myself in different circumstances than I'd ever been in my entire life after a car accident. And I had been struggling with getting out and about and getting around and had had some difficulties that that had continued. And I had a service dog essentially fall in my lap. Wow. How did a service dog fall in your lap, Tanja? (laughs) Well, it's a blessing. It was a big blessing. Um, I had been doing some volunteer work for a local rescue organization, and um, someone called one day and wanted to turn in their service dog because they could no longer take care of it. And wow. So I know. And I was the one answering the phones, and so I gave them a call back and started to ask questions about the dog so we could find the proper placement 
for for the dog, and um, and the more questions that that I asked them, then the more light bulbs started going off in my head, I, because I really didn't know that much about assistance dogs before. I all all I knew is that I'd seen one on the street once, and I'd learned about them in school, but other than that, I'd really never been around any, and I had really given it no more thought because, you know, I thought they were great and I loved dogs and everything, but I didn't need a service dog or an assist dog, and I didn't need a guide dog, and so I was happy for those that that did that they could have they had a companion like that that was such a great helper. But I really didn't know any more than that. But the more questions I asked them, the more curious I got. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. That is such a cool story because you usually don't. That's a unique story. You don't hear that very often. Wow. So it really, no, not at all. So tell us, so what happened next? So you, you had this conversation with this person and then what happened? Well, I started researching online about assistance dogs and, and really what all that they did for people. And the more I researched, the more excited I got because I had been in bed for for years, you know, not able to get out of the house and, and not able to get up and out of bed very much. And and I just got more and more excited and I thought, wow, maybe this dog would work for me. And if this dog didn't work for me, I could still find this dog a great home because they said that he was, he was needing to retire. He was an old dog. And, and I thought, well, you know, I could at least see, you know, if he would work for me, and if not, find him a great home, and then I could look for an assistant dog for myself, eventually. Mm -hmm. How old was he? Well, they said he was around eight or nine, and that that was about three or four years ago, and he's still going strong. He looks great. He looks better than he did when I got him. That's amazing. I know, and he has more energy than he did when I got him. And what's his name? I don't know. His name is Luca. Luca. Wow. Well, and so who trained Luca originally? Originally, the Mestipops trained Luca. I found that out um, because I wasn't shared, that that information wasn't shared with me. And um, in my research online, and I ran across the different groups around, and I kept contacting them because, you know, he he was an older dog, and, and it turned out that he worked perfectly with me. And... So we've become quite the team, but he's since he is older, I thought I better start looking because I don't know how long it will take me to get a different dog if if he can't work anymore. Right. And so right. I just started looking, and in that process, I called up the Mesta Pups and said, "Hi, I'm, you know, looking to get another dog trained. I currently have an assistance dog now, and." And they said, well, what kind of dog do you have? And I said, well, he's a Doberman, and he's a blue Doberman. And then lights started going off in their head, and they said, really, tell me more about this dog. And and so I did, and they said, I think we trained that dog. How did you get that dog? <laughs> wow. And so anyway, yeah, it was just a really big blessing. So I've um, now come in contact with his original trainer, and you know, found out a little bit more about him, and and it's just really great. So the Mesta Pups is one of the service dog groups here in Nebraska that that train, and um, and they were they were also one of the people that helped one of the groups that helped with my event. So it's, so, it's really nice. Yeah, that is such an amazing story. Well, tell us how did you start working with Luca? When you first got him, how did did you know his commands and and how did how did that work and what does he do to help you? Well, um, when I first got him, I knew that I needed to be the only person that gave him instructions, and so my husband and I worked it out because we also had another dog at the time. So I was the one who did all the, the instructions with him, and I was the one who took him outside, and I was the one who fed him, and I was the one who told him to sit or stay down or all of these different basic things so he would bond with me. Mm-hmm. And my husband um, basically just kind of ignored him and, and let me work with him. And then once he bonded with me, then my husband also got into the picture a little bit and, 
he's of course now bonded with both of us, but mm -hmm. um, he knows he's supposed to help me, and he knows my husband's for play. So it works out really well. And I just started going online and doing research about how dogs were trained and things like that. I had um, been in 4-H when I was a, a child, and I had trained dogs in 4-H, basic obedience training, and had competed in a little bit in 4-H. And I have to say I wasn't the best at it. <laughs> but I knew the basics, so just working with the obedience. And then they had kind of shared that he was a seizure alert dog originally. And mm -hmm. um, after my accident, I had debilitating migraines, and I would have four or five of them a week, and sometimes one migraine would last four days, and then I'd get rid of it and be back in 12 hours or six hours or something, and, and other times I'd go for a little bit longer, but I was not able to tell when my migraines were starting, and so I thought, well, migraines and seizures are kind of the same, maybe, because they're giving me seizure medicine, and so maybe you know, he would alert on my migraines. And sure enough, he did. He started alerting me before. And they had shared with me one of the, the cues that I had asked, and one of the cues that they said that he did, he would just stare at you when you were going to have a seizure. And so I just paid attention to if he would just stare at me abnormally long or in a different way, then I would kind of pay attention to that and, and just kind of document if, I did get a migraine a little bit later or not, you know, and and he started alerting on me. And it took a lot of paying attention to him because it was very subtle. And that's kind of how we started working together. So that was one of the things that he does for me is, is alert me on the migraines. And then that's he, incredible. He always, <laughs> that's, I know. So, that's incredible, Tanja. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. I know. Wow. <laughs> I was surprised. You know, and yeah, so that that worked out great. And then he helps me up and down. Like I can get stuck on the floor because I have problems getting up when I get exhausted. Mm -hmm. Like if I would sit down on the floor for some reason or if I would fall, which that happens too, then I would have difficulty getting myself up off the floor, especially, you know, because some things aren't stable to put your your weight on. Mm -hmm. And you can pull those things down on top of you if you put oh, yes. your weight on them. <laughs> and so I learned that that was a bad idea. And so then I was reading about how they can help with that. And so he does bracing work as well. And then he helps me on stairs because a lot of places don't have any rails or some places just have one rail. Mm -hmm. And in some places are rather steep. It just kind of varies. And so he helps me on stairs because I've fallen on stairs several times. Yeah. And, and when he's doing his job, I don't fall on stairs. And that really helps because the more falls that you take, you know, the, the more setbacks you can have. And so, oh, absolutely. Um, it's, that's so remarkable. I mean, that's so wonderful. You two have come so far in such a short time together. And the way that you two met, I mean, that's just... That is so astounding that you two were destined to be together. We were. We were. It was. This is what I was meant to be doing, and this is what he is who I was meant to have in my life, and I'm who he was meant to have because not only has he helped me, but I've helped him. And how do you so, think you've helped him? Tell us about that. Well, when I got him, he. this is embarrassing probably for me to tell you about him from his perspective that he used to be very gassy mm -hmm. and it was really bad. He would even leave the room. Aww. And so um, <laughs> and I noticed that he was always looking and chewing on his feet. So I just started, oh my gosh, what's going on? And the chewing on his feet got really worse and I tried to keep him on really good food and all of these things. And it soon became apparent that he w had allergies yes. and he was allergic to quite a lot of things I found out and so I started cooking food for him and eliminating things and so now he's on a salmon and sweet potato diet with a little bit of beef liver and he's on some supplements and things like that as well but the change in his diet has made such a significant difference mm -hmm. and unfortunately He's not only allergic to food. 
He's also allergic to grass and trees and bugs and dust and a whole bunch of things in addition to a whole lot of different foods. And I'm sure that when they trained him, he didn't have these allergies, but he developed them over time like people do. Mm -hmm. I didn't need to have some of the allergies that I have. And um, now that I have them, I have to avoid more things. And so in learning that, he wears booties all the time. And... Um, to protect him from the environment and also to protect him from himself because you can't keep him away from all of his allergies. Right, right. What kind of booties do you put on him? I use Mutlux, and oh. they're really great. What was I it again, Tanja? Mutlux, M-U-T-T-L-U-K-S. And okay. if you're a member of the International Assistance Dog Association, mm-hmm. Yes. Um, you even get a half-price discount on them. Oh, nice. Yes, and even half off of the shipping. Oh, wow, that's and, great. Yes, and they've been such a big godsend because they're rather expensive, but the half-price discount, you know, that makes them so much more affordable. And they work so well, and they stay on his feet. And I've tried other boots before, and he's a large Doberman. He's around 100 pounds, and so... He's, I've got to find everything in a fairly large size for him, and they do come in a large enough size for him. And they they come in winter boots, and they come in summer boots, and they have they actually have three different styles of boots. Oh wow! And many well, different colors. So yeah. Well, I'm so interested in that because my retired service dog Morgan has very similar issues to Luca's issues, and it's the same for him. They're allergies. And he just has the, yeah, but I hadn't tried any boots on him, but I love that idea. And I'm going to see about getting some mutlucks. That sounds perfect for him. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. They're so wonderful. I'm almost giddy with excitement about them because they have just really made our lives so much better. So that's what he wears when we go out at home. I take them off of him sometimes. You know, and for a while he was wearing them 24-7 because he had gotten our, well, when our other dog that we had was passing away, he'd gotten rather sick and everything, taking care of both of them had become very difficult. And so I was paying attention to my other dog one day and, and then Luca really did some damage on himself. So we've all cleared up from that, but he, bless his heart, he chewed his feet down to the bone almost. Mm. And well, that's what Morgan does. Morgan will be bleeding very quickly. I, like you said, I yes. have to. It'll be so intense that it'll be bleeding very quickly. Yes, and you ha- you just really have to pay attention. Yeah. And the other thing that I've used is something called the comfy cone. Uh huh. And and that's a little cone for his head, but it's soft like a pillow, and it goes yes. all the way around his head. And that's what he wears at night. So I take his booties off at night, so his feet can have some air. And then I put the little comfy cone on his head, and that works perfectly. And he doesn't, I'm not to say that he doesn't mind it. I think he prefers not to have it on his head, but he knows why it's there. Yeah. And he is definitely willing to have it on. Mm-hmm. And, and he goes to sleep with it, and it's just like he's sleeping on a pillow because it's soft the whole way around his head. And so that's one of the things that my vet shared with me. That has been a big blessing, too, because before we would have to keep his booties on all night. And unfortunately, he just doesn't chew on his feet. He chews on his elbows also. Yep. And so that has really solved our problems between the diet changes and the booties and the little comfy cone. We're doing rather well now. Well, that sounds so similar to Morgan, and Morgan has to sleep in a cone as well because he does the same thing. He licks and will chew on his elbows as well. It's his whole arms, his whole body, actually. He's just is just so allergic and so agitated. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this is such an amazing story. Well, we are going to take a quick break and hear some important messages from our sponsors. And we'll come right back and visit more with Tanja because we want to hear all about the event that she planned. So come right back after these important messages. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. 
Working Like Dogs is brought to you by Pet Care Rx, America's most affordable pet pharmacy. Pet Care Rx offers the same meds as top vets, but with a savings up to 50%. And if you find a lower price on a certified EPA and FDA approved medication, Pet Care Rx will match that price. So go to PetCareRx.com. Use promo code WORKDOGS10, W-O-R-K-D-O-G-S, the number 10, and receive $10 off orders of $50 or more. Welcome to Sassy Seniors, a show about our fabulous older dogs and cats. I'm your host, Kelly Jackson. You know, I wanted to create a show to really showcase our senior pets. And, you know, as the human population ages and lives longer, of course, so are our wonderful pets. But many of us with aging pets, it's so interesting. We have a tough time realizing or really admitting that they are seniors. So, in a way, I kind of like to think of our senior pets as, as wise puppies. What do you think about that? Be sure to join us for another day of Sassy Seniors. And remember, celebrate your senior pets. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On PetLife Radio. PetLife Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. And we're visiting today with Tanja, and she's telling us about her astounding story of her dog, her service dog, Luca. But Tanja, I know you've told us all about Luca, but I have to ask you to tell us about the event that you did this year for National Assistance Dog Week. How did you organize that, and, and how did that get started? Well, I found out about it on a blog that I read, and Melissa Mitchell does the blog, and she shared about it being National Assistance Dog Week, and I think she shared your website, and so, of course, being curious, I went and checked it out because I love looking at all things related to assistance dogs, and when I came to your site there that you'd created, I thought, wow. I could do something. I wonder if Nebraska has had anything go on, and this sounds like a really great thing. I had already been working with a Nebraska state senator, um, Kate Sullivan, and we had been working on getting some revisions made to Nebraska's laws uh, because I'd had difficulty, and she'd had a constituent who had difficulty, and so she decided to take up this issue. And when I read about National Assistance Dog Week, I thought, well, this is one more way that I can do something, whether it be small or large, I can do something else to bring attention to these wonderful helpers that we have and into the plight and predicaments that we find ourselves in because of physical, mental states that we're in. And this is one way that I can just let other people know how great these dogs are and how important these dogs are and how worth protecting and helping these dogs and the people that utilize these dog services, you know, because I think people just don't really realize. I didn't before, and I just assume that others are like me, you know, just not being aware because they don't use the services of a service dog. They just aren't aware of even what the problems might be or what the the benefits might be, and so it's just one more way to do a little bit of education. So I used all of the information that was on your website that you oh, had good. already for us. <laughs> good. And I copied it all verbatim and <laughs> added in my information, and it worked so well because during that time, you know, I do not have a legal mind, and I chose to through the proclamation, the National Assistance Dog Week proclamation that you would get from your state governor. And my state governor, Mike Johans, was gracious and honored our request to make it Assistance Dog Week. And he was also thrilled to find out that we had won this award. Oh, good. Yes, I spoke with him a couple weeks ago, as a matter of fact, and shared that with him. And so... He just stood up a little taller of it. Somebody from the rest <laughs> won it. So it's just kind of cool. That's great. And, <laughs> yes. And that's basically, it was, it was as simple as declaring Nebraska National Assistance Dog Week. 
and getting others involved. So that yeah. it was just awesome. Well, and tell us who all did you get involved and how did that work? Well, that's, I think, what really is the special thing because I come from a background of people working together. And if I have one idea and you have one idea, then we each have one idea. But if we each share our ideas, then we each have two. And one of my favorite mentors, Mary Kay Ash, she shared that. And that's something that I truly, truly believe in. And I love to share information. I hate keeping things to, more, to, to myself because I, I really feel that the more you share, the more that comes back to you. And so in the process of looking for an additional assistance dog for my future, I had come across some organizations and some trainers that train dogs, and I asked them all to be involved. And I asked them also to be involved in the legislation that Senator Sullivan is working on updating for the state of Nebraska as well. And so we kind of have a unifying theme or a unifying reason for all coming together in addition to just having it be assistance dog week. So Domestic Pups, which is who trained Luca, got involved. And it's D-O-M-E-S-T-I hyphen pups, P-U-P-S. And they got involved. And then Noah's Dogs got involved. And that's N-O-A-H-S-D-O-G-S, got involved as well. And they're another training organization. And they actually trained a friend of mine's dog and a, a gal that I just met. And, and then another trainer, Stephanie, she also got involved. And then some of the trainers from each of the groups and their dogs in training came to the event and then other assistance dogs and their partners that I met, whether in online groups or through Senator Sullivan or through friends, they also got involved and attended the event as well at the state capitol. And so we had quite the group. We had, you and, did. <laughs> yes. That's so awesome. I love that you had organizations, individuals with disabilities who are actually part of working teams, and most importantly, you had the dogs, which is so cool. (laughs) Yes. I think people at the state capitol were overwhelmed with the amount of dogs in the state capitol that day because I don't remember how many we had, but like 12 or 15 or something, lots of dogs. And Luca and I, I have to say, Luca was the worst behaved of the whole day, but he was definitely <laughs> excited as well. And I'm sure that some of my enthusiasm was spreading. <laughs> of course, of course. Because <laughs> he was ready for a party. <laughs> yep, yep. I know. Whistle always thinks, I always think that Whistle thinks it's his birthday. And all these people have come to see him. It's a party. <laughs> yes. So it must be for That's them. definitely Luca's. Yes. Yep. <laughs> like, friends, friends, I have friends. And exactly. So he was so excited. Oh. It was great. And actually one of the individuals that came with her service dog, she has worked to her name is Roxanne and she has worked to change Nebraska assistance dog laws in the past as well and has gotten some great things accomplished. And then she's still working on um advocating for, for others as well. So it was just really a great combination of people That's great. that were there. It sounds like it. Well, and tell us about the legislation. What are you working on? How are you trying to change the laws in Nebraska? Well, for starters, we'd like to bring the, the laws in Nebraska up to date with the new federal laws, which works out really great. Last year we tried to do this, and that Senator Sullivan had worked on, and we went to the committee, and it didn't even make it out of the committee. But we were only looking at addressing part of the ch- just a small part that needed to be changed. Mm-hmm. This time we're going after a comprehensive overhaul of all of the service dog and assistance dog regulations and laws. And we're going to, we are going to totally look at bringing it into the line, not look at it, this is the plan. The plan is to make it totally in line with the federal. And then we're also considering giving some protections and to the, dogs in training as well Mm -hmm. and their trainer Mm -hmm. because as I've found out, you know, I can't just send my dog in to some place that I've had a problem with, um, with the trainer without me going with or, 
um, without calling ahead or something like that. And I can go in there with him because he, he is a trained service dog and he's all ready to go. But if he has a particular issue or was scared of something or something happened there, you know, and he just needs to go back with somebody to work on it over and over and over. And I just don't have the stamina for that. Yeah. You know, I really don't have that ability to just tell someone, please go in there and work with him on this issue, you know, for 30 minutes and let's get this fixed. So right. I can go back in there. Yeah, that's a really important piece because not every state, as you know, has that in their legislation that covers trainers to work with puppies in training or service dogs that need refresher training. So that's excellent that you guys are thinking about including that. Well, we're very hopeful, you know, and um, last time it didn't seem that we had enough support to get it through, to get it pushed out of the committee. And so this time... I, um, we had talked about, talked to some people and I, I had really learned a lot between this year and last year and in learning that it didn't make it out of committee and looking at reasons maybe why it didn't make it out of committee, that we weren't a strong enough force Mm -hmm. to be reckoned with and that we weren't a loud enough voice and we weren't coming from a multiple, like multiple backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um, bringing in business people, bringing in trainers, bringing in people with assistance dogs, bringing in, you know, all of these people with all of these different perspectives on the subject that are all forming one cohesive voice, I think is going to be the way to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. We have to show them that we are their constituents (laughs) and that we are voters. Yep. And that we have friends who are voters. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they need to see that, that you have a lot of support. That's right. And I think even support coming from out of state is important because so many people travel through Nebraska or so many people come here for conventions. Oh, or yeah. So many people come here to visit family. Mm-hmm. And you never know what state you're going to go to. So if there's legislation pending in some state and you can find out about it and you can be supportive of it, you really should be because... You never know when that's going to be you sitting in that state. That's right. That's right. And Nebraska wants to be able to compete with other states to bring those business opportunities into the state. So they definitely want to make sure that they have the most progressive and, you know, and state-of-the-art laws. That's exactly right. And I would like Nebraska to be an example for the rest of the states and not to be looked at as, oh, don't go to that state. You know? Well, it's, it sounds like that's exactly what you're doing, Tanja. You're putting Nebraska on the map. <laughs> that's I <hope> awesome. So. <laughs> that's awesome. I hope so. <laughs> Nebraska offers a lot of great things, and I would like this to be one of the things that they can add to the list of why I come to Nebraska. Yeah, well, you're definitely making it a better place. Well, I have one last question for for you because I can't believe our time is running out. But as part of your award, you got a $200 gift certificate from the servicedoghouse.com. And we want to send a big thank you to Wayne and Tina Tuttle, who are the owners of servicedoghouse.com, that provided that gift certificate for you and I was just wondering have you been on shopping did you get something well I haven't gotten anything yet when you had called and told me about it I didn't even realize there was a gift certificate to go along with it yeah so that was a big surprise and I had never been to servicedoghouse.com at all I didn't even I had never even heard of it in all my searches and I have to say that they have an impressive amount of things there that have piqued my interest. Good. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, they have some amazing stuff. I love to go on their website and check out all of their equipment and supplies and accessories. I mean, they have all kinds of things. So I can't wait to hear what you and Luca finally decide on with your $200 gift certificate. I know. Well, I do know (laughs) that it will involve a toy or two. Okay, good. (laughs) He definitely deserves a new toy or two. 
He does. He definitely does. Well, Tanja, thank you so much for being with us today and for all that you're doing on behalf of assistance dogs in Nebraska and throughout the United States because your work is really touching all of us. And I really thank you for that and, and want to honor you and Luca for your wonderful relationship and your very special bond that you two have. I'm so glad you found each other and I want to hear more about the things that you're doing together and I can't wait to hear what you're going to do for the 2011 National Assistance Dog Week. Well, we already have been talking about that. So it'll be a surprise. It probably is at this moment going to be a surprise to us as well. (laughs) We have been talking about it and we're definitely going to be doing something again. And we had such a good time with all of us getting together, all the different groups and all the different trainers and all of the different folks who have service and assistance dogs, we are definitely going to do something and and make it even more fantastic than it was this year. So if that can be possible, I don't know. Luca and I have loved talking to you and Whistle as well because <laughs> Thank you, you are such an example. And what the information that you share and that you provide is invaluable, I think, because you have a resource that gathers different people together from different perspectives and educates people as well. And it's something that is a positive way to impact others and to get the word out there about how special our dogs are and how great of things that they do for each of us. And you and Whistle are definitely a fabulous example as well. And I am just really honored to talk with you and that you've taken the time to listen to our story and to share it so thank you so much as well oh well thank you so much and i just can't thank you enough for all that you're doing and like i said i look so forward to hearing about 2011 and i'm so sorry that we're out of time because we could sit and talk about our favorite subject service dogs and assistance dogs for hours and hours But thank you so much, Tanja, and I just give Luca a big hug and kiss for me. I will do that, and please do the same to Whistle. I will, and thank you so much, and thank you so much to our producers and our sponsors for making Working Like Dogs possible on Pet Life Radio, and we really appreciate you being with us today, and if you'd like more information about National Assistance Dog Week, please feel free to visit our website at www.assistancedogweek.org that's O-R-G and if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to share with, with me and Whistle please feel free to do so we'd love to hear from you and you can email us at Marcy that's M-A-R-C-I-E at PetLifeRadio.com so thank you for being with us today and we hope you'll come back and join us again very soon. Thanks so much. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.